This video is gonna be a quick one. I'm going to teach you guys how to make melodic dubstep by breaking down my remix of Bear Miller's Playground. I'll try to keep everything as short as possible, so without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. Processing on the vocals is really simple. Most of them are only for special effects. So for example, this pre-drop hook. This entire rack is dedicated for that single effect. The rest of them are simply some simple EQ and some gain automations just to balance the volume between different tracks. I can sort of A, B between before and after just to show you how, how I cleaned it up. So this is without any processing. Everybody got a prize round here to play. Make me an offer. As you can hear, it's pretty high passed um, because I did some pretty aggressive EQ. Uh, this decapitator is only there to tame the high end a little bit to make it sound less harsh. And for this smooth operator, uh, you can see it as Sooth's alternative. It's also simply there to tame some of the resonant frequencies. But overall, it's just EQ and some tonal balance processing. So for the breakdowns of the instrumental, I'll simply mute the vocals just to let you guys hear what exactly I'm doing for this remix. So here are the instrumentals for the first verse. <laughs> Yep, it's rather simple. It's pretty minimal because the vocals that I extracted isn't really clean. So like some of the instruments are still in there. Who told you we so you can still kind of hear those percussions at the back. So I just don't want to have my instrumental to kind of clash with some of those percussions. As you can hear every four bars, you hear this heavy dubstep growl thing uh, it's actually not a growl it's a power chord with an ao8 at the bottom i think okay that's a bass patch pretty simple just some spectral uh, wavetables uh, with some flanger eq distortion and motive and compression here the other layer oh that's just a sub uh, which i've went over like countless times in my other videos it's just a sine wave with some saturation and here that's the guitar as you can see it's an echo soundwards guitar loop and if i remove all the processing it sounds like this here i simply used the wave sample. i used a pretty distorted amp completely changed the tone of the guitars and followed by another pedal which distorts it even more and I did some EQ to clean up the mid and the very low end. And I think that's all for the first hit. It's followed by this dubstep patch. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just a sine wave being frequency modulated by another spectral table. A resonance high pass filter with a notch just to do some filter movement. I actually modulated a lot of parameters using one single LFO. I also got some pretty standard processing here. Diode is actually pretty cool sounding distortion and serum by the way. So don't just stick with the tube and soft clip. The other ones are pretty interesting sounding, except these two, because they sound way too distorted. <laughs> River filter is doing quite a lot too, because if I remove it, turn it back on, it gives it a really weird metallic tone. It sounds really interesting, I think. Okay, we also got this dubstep patch. It's another FM patch, some spectral tables, nothing too crazy going on here. And then it's the AO8s. We also got another AO8 for those octave jumps. Oh, they're actually the same AO8s, however, they're processed differently. Uh, moving on, we got this new thing here. 
So goes with that FM noise patch. I think it's just another random serum base that I made. <laughs> it doesn't really sound good on its own, I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather not go over this patch because it just doesn't sound good. <laughs> and in the middle of the verse, I got this reversed brow thing. So it kind of acts as a transition, kind of like how you use reverse kicks, which I also did. Here's the original sample. I simply, I think I pitch shifted it and simply reversed it, that's all. The rest of them are just the exact same thing, but played in different pitches. So here's the interlude session. Here's how it sounds like. So as you can hear, there are a lot of ambient elements going on. So for example, we got that's the main pad. Um, also got this ambient lead, which I already went over for my Trap Nation tutorial. And then it's a re-space. I mean, it's also pretty self-explanatory because it's a rather basic sound. We got this piano here. Oh, this is actually my own piano library. Uh, it's a piano that I recorded myself. Here I got this other piano layer, I think. Just also made using my piano library. With some lush sounding reverb. With some pretty long decay time settings. With reverb, it creates some really low end rumble, which would sort of mess up your mix. So just to clean the low end up, simply used a high pass filter. And I used another low pass filter just to filter out a very high end so it doesn't sound too in your face. For the rest of the section, it's just some reverse symbols. I think that's it, because it's a pretty minimal intro. So let's move on to the build up. For the instruments, so like these pianos and stuff, they're essentially doing the same thing, but I added more stuff on top, for example, more ambient leads. And more pad layers, I think. And what else? Oh, it's the it's those distorted guitar chords in the verse. I put them here because I also use these guitars for my chord stacks. You can see this as sort of a foreshadowing. And then hmm, I'm not sure what this is. It could be strings. It's a serum patch actually. So in context, it sounds like this. Welcome to the As you can also hear, I got this other string layers playing in different melody.
I really want this to cut through because I, I really like the whole melody so I did put some distortion on my strings just to make things cut through but in context you can't really tell it's distorted. However, if I remove the distortion, it kind of disappeared in the mix. So it's a rather subtle difference, but by adding some soft saturation or distortion like this, it can actually help make things cut through. Um, let's go over the drums. Let's play them all together. As you can hear, uh, there are a lot of orchestral instruments, like orchestral drums here. Most of them are just cashmere samples. We also got these like cinematic drum loops, also by cashmere. And... It's pretty minimal. But as for the sound choice, I actually picked this for a reason. Because as you can hear, it has a hybrid sound, so it sounds kind of electronic. Probably because I time-stretched it by quite a ton, so this is how it sounds like originally. Yeah, it's a pretty fast drum loop, but I stretched it out a ton. And if you listen to the original track, it has some pretty interesting sounding percussions, which I think thought would go really well with this drum loop. It's not really something you'd use in your regular productions, but it goes really well with this track. For the rest of the drums, these are the claps. There are just stadium claps by Kashmir. Uh, more gastro heads. <laughs> um, some tonal risers, I think. This is the snare roll that I made using midis. As you can hear, I changed up the velocities in the midi clip so it doesn't sound as repetitive, although they're the exact same samples. I got this other snare. I also did some pitch shifting by modulating the transposition so the pitch goes up towards the end. I think that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the first drop. So at first I think I started off with the bass line and the dubstep growls. Let me solo the sidechain group. We got this first hit. Ooh, it's actually from my bass jam. And it's a very long, um, just random bass jam that I did. And uh, I just like to throw these in when uh, I need some like really interesting sound and I don't want to do sound design. Um, like from scratch in the session. We look at the original sample, it sounds like this. I thought I took the middle bit here. Yeah, probably. And... Oh, there's not much processing actually. It's just a high pass filter to make space for the sub bass. And... Oh, a fat rack. Uh, I don't really recommend using that because it's just a lazy way to beef up your sounds, but I think I was in a rush because I really wanted to put this out really quick after the song came out for three days. So I just slapped on the fat rack for the quick results, but I personally don't recommend doing this. I think you should learn how each of these work 
for your own sake, to be honest. <laughs> Let's go over all the bases first. We also got this. I think this is the up and down serum patch. Yep. So for the first style of all, it's for mainly for the volume automation, like the volume movement and filter movement. To create variety between the first and second whoops, I used LFO 2 and 3 for that. If we look at the curve here. When the second warp arrives, it's actually modulating the parameters to a different value, creating variety in tones. For example, the FM value is different, which creates a huge difference in tone. And it's also modulating the chorus, the phaser differently, which is how I created that up and down movement. And moving on. Okay, this is pretty shitty sounding. Uh, in context, it sounds like this. Uh, I think it's just a pretty simple FM bass patch, I think. A sawtooth wave being FM by another spectral table. I really love spectral table, don't I? Um, there's literally no LFO movement. It's just a pretty straightforward patch. Moving on, we got another bass jam here. As you can hear, it's the very first hit. That, that's pretty much it for the basis because it's pretty simple for the first chop. So we got this focal chop here. In context, it sounds like this. I really wanted to introduce some of the elements from the original track. So I took the original vocals and I picked out the bits that I liked. As you can see, it's the original vocals. So if I solo it. I'm sorry, um, because it's time stretched. Uh, it sounds like this originally. Here in the second half, you can hear this plug being introduced. Because other than the original vocals being introduced, I wanted to add something new so it doesn't sound too repetitive in the second half. In context, it sounds like this. And then we got... I think this is the exact same lead for my Trap Nation tutorial track. Here's what the first layer sounds like. And here's the second layer. So without any of these group effects, the lead sounds like this. So let's go over them one by one. So first I start off with OTT to brighten things up. Not gonna lie, it's rather subtle. They sound more tight in my opinion, like dynamic wise. And it's overall a tiny bit brighter. But at the same time, you can hear some artifacts in the low end. Which sounds a little bit disgusting and it also messes up the entire mix. So I used an EQ to filter out those frequencies. It's followed up by a sausage fattener. For that hide the edge just to make it sound a little bit distorted and I got this utility just to do the whole gain staging thing but moving on so as you can see I'm using an audio effect rack this is really useful in Ableton 
especially when you're working with plugins that doesn't have a mix knob or a dry wet knob. With audio effect track, you can just create another chain. So the bottom one, as you can see, I didn't put any auto effects. So this would be the dry signal. And for the upper chain, we got the sound effect and again. And now we can play with the dry wet. Here I got another M plugin. This is the Ableton stock amp. Here's how it sounds. As you can see, the dry wet is pretty low. It's only at 16%, but it gives it more high end. Also, uh, remember to play with this output button here because by default it's in mono. As you can also hear, there are some low-end rumbles, so I did another EQ. I went over it before, but basically, I'm having three different parallel chains. So the middle one is the dry signal, the bottom one is the reverb with the high-pass filter, and with the top one is an echo boy. I'm doing this for flexibility, because if you're simply playing with a dry wet, what if you only wanted to process the wet signal or the dry signal? This would be impossible without having an audio effect rack where you can put your effects on a separate chain and you have further processing on that specific chain only. Like by doing an EQ here, I'm only processing, I'm only high passing the reverb. So it's not affecting the dry signal at all, which makes it really flexible because I can now even further process the dry signal without affecting the reverb, which is really cool. So here I got this other this is the post drop reverb rack I made. But basically, it's just to soften things out at the end of the drop. To create a smooth transition between the drop and the second verse. That's all for the lead. And here comes the chord stacks. As mentioned, I use the guitar loops here. Basically the processing is the exact same as the first guitars. So let's go for the rest of the chord stacks. For the first layer, this is actually the path you heard in the interlude section, I think. It's both of them combined, so I think I resampled them and I threw it into this group here. Yep, they're the exact same path, but I simply distorted them by a ton and an OTT on it. Here's the second layer. Uh, exact same pad, but an octave up. Third layer. It's a pad layer. Uh, it's from my sample library. And the fourth layer. Okay, it's just noise. I think it's the white noise and serum, the default white noise with a high pass filter just to clean things up. And the fifth layer is probably a super soft. Pretty self explanatory. <laughs> Uh, simply two of the tune saws, one of them being pitched up an octave, and that's it. And yeah, group processing includes OTT, mid side OTT, which I went over before, Camel Crusher, and an EQ just to clean things up. I think that's it for the chord stacks, and here's the bass, the main bass line. This is also inspired by AU5. Oh, <laughs> so huge shout out to him. Um, uh, the main thing that I want to go over here is the chain selector, I think. Pay attention to this thing here. As you can see, there's this fade in curve here. By controlling the chain selector, I can control the sort of dry wet amount of different bass patches.
actually change the tone as I modulate the chain selector. But yeah, let's go over what each of these chain is doing. For the first chain, it sounds like this. This is the exact same bass I went over in the first. So I just won't spend, just won't waste time on it. Explain it again. This is the second patch, a white saw layer. I actually do this a lot because most of my bases are rather mono. So I just add a white saw layer just to widen things out. Two D tune saws in the same octave but with some hyper, the dimension expander with some hard clip distortions. I also filtered it. Here is the third layer. Literally a fucking re-space uh, and it sounds shit. But yeah, two detune saws with no additional processing other than the filter here. But other than that, I also got these two. But that's it for the bases. Here's how the drum sounds like. Okay, as you can hear, it's pretty straightforward. For the fill, I layered some Foley samples, I think. Yeah, that's layered on top of the whoosh sound. So, together. And for the Tom fills, here's a little cool trick. I do this a lot, like using the capitator on toms. But if I turn up the wet signal, just, just so you can hear the difference. Here's without. And here's with. It fucks up the tom, but I think it sounded really cool. So I dialed back a little and just left it there. Yeah, for the main drums, it's just virtual right kick. Yep. A snare. This is actually my own snare from, from my free sample pack, Monad. And I added some white noise exhaust and crash cymbals for some more impacts on the kicks. As you can hear, there's this call and response thing happening again. So to kind of uh, make everything sound coherent, I did the same thing for the drums. This is the call bit. And for the response, I added some hi-hat loops and more percussions. Yeah, I also kept the same energy going on in the second half. I decided to keep the hi-hat loops going and I added more rides on top. But yeah, that's all for the first drop actually. So let's move on to the second verse. Here's how the second verse instrumental sound like. <laughs> This is actually my favorite bit in this entire remix. I'm really proud of the sound design aspect of this section. Okay, let's go over the instruments. As you can hear, that stab thing on the first beat returns here. Uh, I think there's a new layer though. Um, yep. Another serum bass patch. This is some basic FMing. Distortion, Camel Crusher, EQ, and 
Oh, here I also re refers to guitar chuck. The main thing I want to talk about is actually this wobbly thing here. As you can see, I bounce it to audio because uh, I'm not sure why actually, but here's what it sounds like originally. It's just a two unison sine wave with some FMing. I used an LFO to create the, those wobbly motions. So it's modulating the sub bass, modulating the oscillator ace volume, the cutoff of the low pass filter, a um, bunch of other stuff. But yeah, together they sound like this, which sounds pretty cool. So here's this other layer. Actually, it sounds really different after I turn off these effects. But let's take a look at the serum patch. It's always being modulated by another spectral table again. I also messed with the wavetable positions on the oscillator B. Okay, so here's the first effect, Camel Crusher. I actually turned on the built-in filter, so now it sounds a little bit low pass because as you can hear, the original sound is rather harsh in the high end. I just decided to low pass it and distort it. And here's the other plugin, Magic Switch. This is a analog sounding chorus effect. It's actually free. So now it sounds really detuned. Um, an EQ just to filter the harsh frequencies out and clean up the low end. Another chorus. For some reason, to make things even more detuned and wider, and I finished it off with an echo, an Ableton echo. Also, turn on the ping pong mode so it's doing some interesting sounding uh, left and right movement. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, but the rest of first two is the exact same instruments from first one. The AO8, the octave jumps, and those bass sounds. Oh, this is new. This is new. Uh, but it's also really straightforward. It's just a soul wave, <laughs> a detuned soul wave, and some of those things are being modulated. Hyper mix value, chorus mix value. Okay, master tune is being modulated, which explains that movement and pitch. That's all for the instruments. And let's spend some time talking about the drums. Because I did spend some time on selecting these samples. So you can hear they also have this really cool hybrid sounding vibe, same as that orchestral drum loop that I just mentioned in the build up, and it's all handpicked just to fit the overall aesthetic. Some interesting sounds here. The snare layer, because I'm using frequency shifter like to manually tune those heads. So it's in tune with the chords. They're sort of playing a chord, which is pretty interesting. And this one here. 
I'm also tuning tuning the samples manually, which is really interesting. I think. <laughs> okay, I got tons of foleys. Okay, if I solo all the percussion. It also creates that hybrid vibe, which I really dig. Yeah, let's also go over the main snare. Just some basic distortion, OTT, uh, some EQ for the high end boost and the low mid clean up. Some soft clipper, just to play with the dynamics. And an edge delay. I think this is to give it more depth in the mix. You can hear that tiny delay at the end. But yeah, that's all for first two. And we got the second interlude, which is really short. It's just four bars long, I think. The instruments used here are the exact same as the first interlude. Yeah, there's nothing new here. Uh, but for the second build up, Um, I think it's mostly the kick. The kick is more busy now compared to the first build up. Oh, I dropped back the percussion loop from the second first. Um, but other than that, it's the first two lead, but an octave higher. It's really subtle, so it's barely audible, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> I guess the focus kind of carried it. But yeah, for the second drop, it sounds like this. You can hear it's hugely inspired by the first drop, but I changed it up. One thing that's really noticeable here is this harmony layer for the leads. So I've done the exact same thing for the Trap Nation track, but I'll just go over here once again. It's basically the same exact same lead patches, but they're playing at a different pitch. For the core stacks, I don't think there's anything new except here. I resampled the whole core stacks and I pitched it up an octave. I put some low pass and high pass filters just to tame those harsh frequencies because when you pitch stuff up, the high frequencies tend to get really harsh.
uh, oh yeah, there's a lot more dubstep bases now. <laughs> Actually, haven't had this many dubstep bases in a single track before. Yeah, here are the bases. Um, some of them are the ones from the first verse, including this, the up and down patch, and I think this one, yeah, it's from the first drop as well, uh, so it's the space jam thing, yeah, but here are some new stuff, yeah, I also made this a while ago, but basically it's some frequency modulation, uh, in combination with some sync modulation which plays with your wavetable's pitches and uh, modulating the hyper uh, phaser mix chorus mix level filter mix level the resonance on the reefer filter the cutoff <laughs> that's a lot actually here we also got this this is actually from virtual rights presets yeah preset volume 2 I guess this is also a first riot one yup and what else here probably another first riot one yeah I kind of got lazy and started using others presets I tend not to rely on others preset because I want to do the sound design myself and learn but as mentioned I really wanted to finish this remix really quick and put it out so I just went for presets here I did some additional processing by using an amp, overdrive, and some EQ to clean up the sounds. Uh, to compare the differences, here's before, here's after. It's rather subtle, but now it's more aggressive sounding. And then... Uh, it's two basic shapes wavetables, so uh, one saw wave, the FM by a sine wave, and I think it's the computer doing most of the work. Um, if I mute it, it sounds disgusting. Um, yeah, I'm playing with the color filter and I have the resonance at a pretty high value, which explains why you can hear these tonal resonance. The rest of the patch is rather simple, just some volume movement and some FM movement. Next one here. It's also a virtual preset. And then here. Probably another virtual ride preset. <laughs> I'm kind of cheating right now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the bases. As for the drums, they're essentially the same, I think. Yeah, uh, that's basically it for the Playground remix. I'm really glad that a lot of you like this remix. It did really well on my SoundCloud as well as on YouTube, like here. It just passed 10k like last week. So thank you guys all for supporting this remix. I really appreciate it. Also comment down below on what you guys want to learn next. Because I still don't have any plans for March videos yet. So definitely let me know if you have anything that you're interested in learning. But yeah, that's all from me today. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.